Now, we found that a key component to this whole restructuring process was the development of a clear succession plan. Now, we have a one big problem, and it was a problem that was raised by our investors, is that our organisation is driven by me. And our investors were worried that if anything happened to me, would everything turn to custard? So they took out a multi-million dollar key man insurance on me. <laughs> <laughs> but that poses the question, should anything happen to me, could the Dream Center survive? And so we looked at our succession plan so that it would ensure that it would survive. That included casting a clear vision, developing people who would run with the vision, and provide clear appointment processes should any vacancy arise. The other one was to ensure that the Dream Center's assets were protected under a collective body. The third thing we did was we wanted to maximize our resources. How could we get the best value from our people, the best value for our time, and the best value for our dollar. And so that required identifying all of our core business and all of our core business processes. By keeping the main thing the main thing, we found that we could minimize wastage. So we had to become very fussy on what we could do and who we wanted to do it with. Not everyone or everything is going to have a positive impact on our organization. So we had to be diligent at identifying who were all the time wasters. The fourth part of this was we wanted to build an inclusive model to embrace diversity. Now one key aspect to our whole business model was that we purchased the former Manukau Village 8 Cinema Complex at Three Lakewood Court, Manukau, early last year. The credibility of our business plan was tested when we presented it to a group of investors who approved it. And we purchased this multi-million dollar facility to become what is widely known today in South Auckland as the Dream Center. It has f about four acres of land. It's adjacent to the State Highway 1 and State Highway 20 motorways opposite Telstra Clear Pacific Event Center and Rainbow's End. It has over 400 car parks. It has eight fully equipped conference type auditoriums. It has a formal banquet and function area, a cafe, a stage one youth center, a stage one $2 gym, and a film and multimedia suite. But the Dream Center was designed to be primarily a community center. It's being developed so that anyone, regardless of who you are, can use it. It transcends all social, cultural, and religious barriers. So it's been used by the Islamic community. It's been used by the Sikh Indian community. It's been used by the Hindu community, by local Māori, by all of the Pacific communities, Asian communities. On Sunday morning, we have eight churches from different denominations, from different cultures using it. It's been used by youth-based services, health institutions, education institutions, government departments, local schools. It's been used by a wide section of the community. When you enter the Dream Center, you will see our key statement. It's dreaming for a better future. We saw that in the montage today. I want my children to grow up in a great society. I want to inspire them to have a great future. Actually, I want them to dream. Big dreams. Dreams are universal. Everyone has a dream, regardless of who you are. We want people that when you come to the Dream Center, we want to inspire you to dream. I said to my youth workers, our youth leaders, I said, look, we don't want to take children who have youth who have failed school, take them from being an F to a C. We want to take them from an F to identifying the genius in them. I gave them a scenario. I said, if you had 100 young people, which would be the better option for you? 
turn a hundred of them into just some low income worker or maybe three of them could become geniuses in some particular field. We all agreed that we wanted to go for the genius. Developing the Dream Centre with a strong business model and an inclusive agenda, I've not only been, I have not been without my critics. I have been challenged. I've faced criticism such as, why is your church involved in business? That is not the business of the church. You're a pastor, Chris. You're not a businessman. Chris, we heard you were allowing Muslims to give out literature, Islamic literature, in your market on Saturday. Why are you doing all this? I kind of shrugged my shoulders because to me the answer seems quite obvious. The world is changing. The New Zealand that was is no longer the New Zealand that is. The world that was is no longer the New Zealand, the world that is. All of these factors have influenced who the Dream Centre has become today. We have to change, but we have to change with a different attitude to how we exist as organisations because the, more, the world is moving forward and so must we. The reason why I said that we need to have long-term sustainability in ourselves is because the resources readily available to us today are not guaranteed tomorrow. And if the resources aren't guaranteed, then neither will be the services. So we must all take a greater responsibility for our tomorrows by learning from the lessons of today. Bottom line for me, it's about repositioning ourselves to be on the right side of the counter. Thank you.